Hello, I'm Caio Fonseca, and I will present our paper titled Ultrasound-Based Control of Microbubbles for Exosome Delivery in Treating COVID-19 Lung Damage. In this presentation, I will give you a brief introduction to our paper, presenting the theoretical analysis, the simulations and results, and the conclusions uh, about what was achieved in this paper. The COVID-19 pandemic has been causing numerous challenges for mankind in this century. So many studies are being done by researchers uh, with the objective of understanding better the virus, how it spreads, and the effect it has on people, uh, and also how to treat it. Some of these studies discovered that people who got infected with the virus, uh, they may go through different stages of infection that goes from asymptomatic stages to severe stages. And in the case of the severe stages, the immune system does not respond positively against the virus, uh, which can cause its proliferation, uh, affecting and destroying tissues in different organs. Uh, the damage due to the inflammatory process within the lungs can result in life-threatening respiratory disorders like pneumonia. So in order to suppress this inflammation and repair the lung tissues, uh, extraordinary therapeutic, uh, therapeutic efforts are required in a timely manner. So with this in mind, studies are being developed to discover new treatments uh, to suppress the inflammatory stage of the infection using mesenchymal stem cell derived exosomes that has been proven to have immunomodulatory functions that are helpful for the organ's repair. So our proposed solution is to develop a micro bubble to encapsulate and control the release of exosomes to treat the lung damage. And in order to do that, we will use the ultrasound waves to penetrate deep into the lungs to cause an excitation in the micro bubbles in order to break them and release the exosomes. The architecture of our system consists in externally placing ultrasound transducers on the patient's chest. The transducers uh, will then emit ultrasound signals that will penetrate through the tissue layers uh, to reach the micro bubbles containing the exosomes that were previously placed within the lungs through an inhala inhalation process. So these proposed micro bubbles are sensitive to the pressure of the ultrasound waves causing them to rupture. So our project is focused in analyzing and quantifying the micro bubbles breakage process in order to release the exosomes to treat the damaged tissue. The ultrasound technology is very useful and accepted in medical application due to its radiation signals that do not cause harm to the body if the recommended intensities and frequencies are used. Uh, also, the ultrasound transducers are compact, low-cost miniature devices, and numerous technologies are being developed to turn it more portable. So our proposed system aims to optimize the application of the ultrasound acoustic pressure taking into consideration the amount of attenuation that the signal will suffer, the, the tissue acoustic pressure, such as the speed of sound, the attenuation coefficient and density, and for the case of patients with COVID-19, the presence of infected biological materials residing within the alveoli. We know that ultrasound signals will face several effects when it propagates through tissue layers, such as reflection and also attenuation. The signals face attenuation as they propagate through biological tissue due to the absorbance of energy by the fluids, uh, the cell's composition uh, and the structure of the different tissue layers. The, the attenuation uh, affects higher frequency transmission, thus resulting in the signal traveling lower distance uh, because of that. So for our intrabody ultrasound propagation model, we use the attenuation model for the ultrasound signal, which gets attenuated due to the frequency and distance. We can define the ultrasound intensity at a distance d from the source with this model, uh, where alpha represents the attenuation coefficient of the tissues. For the excitation of the micro bubbles, we use the acoustic pressure at this, uh, as described in the equation two, that represents the relationship between the ultrasound intensity and the acoustic pressure, uh, where Z is the acoustic impedance of the medium where the, the micro bubble will be inserted. Part of the ultrasound intensity is reflected due to the difference between the acoustic impedance of the media. This reflected intensity is received and often converted uh, in ultrasound images in medical applications. So to obtain the intensity, we can use uh, equation three, 
that shows the relationship between the incident signal and the received signal when the signal is passing through uh, two different materials. But in our study, uh, we were rather interest, interested in the ultrasound intensity reaching the micro bubbles. And to obtain the ultrasound intensity transmitted, uh, we can use the relationship between the reflected signal and the transmitted signal as shown in this um, the equation four. And the most common approach uh, used for microbubble based drug delivery is by either attaching or inserting the substances into the encapsulated shells. So uh, as mentioned before, our application uh, requires that we rupture and break the microbubble which will have the shell's thickness as one of the main factors uh, to overcome. And so adding another layer, a viscoelastic layer, for example, uh, to the shells will, will limit the microbubble's oscillation amplitude, uh, which makes the, the rupture process very difficult, uh, specifically when we focus on the release of exosomes at low acoustic amplitude. So our proposed solution was to insert the exosomes contained in a hydrogel fluid into the gaseous nucleus of the microbubble, uh, which transforms them into an anti-bubble. And according to Kotopoulos et al., the dynamics of the anti-bubble is similar to the dynamics of a gas bubble if the liquid core occupies less than 50% of the microbubble's diameter. So with that in mind, we were able to use the simplified version of Church's model that was developed by Hoff uh, to model the oscillations of the polymeric microbubbles considering the effects of structure using an encapsulated shell, as shown in equation 5, uh, which takes into account the properties of the surrounding liquid where the microbubble is inserted, uh, the properties of the microbubble, uh, as well as the ap applied acoustic pressure and the radius of the microbubble. So we developed an algorithm to perform the simulations of the ultrasound intensity propagating through the tissues, considering the layers between the chest and alveoli, including the infected biological materials. These simulations were performed in order to obtain the ultrasound intensity that reaches the microbubbles within the lungs. Uh, here are some, some of the frequencies values that uh, are in the range of frequencies commonly used for high intensity focused ultrasound therapeutic techniques and for diagnostic ultrasound images that we use for the simulations. We also considered uh, five different layers of tissues, as we can see described here, uh, the skin, subcutaneous fat, muscles, connective tissues, and lung uh, tissues. So we can see here in this table uh, the acoustic properties of each tissue, uh, and we also can observe that for patients who suffer from severe COVID-19 infections, uh, the lung characteristics changes uh, where the density is larger when compared to a healthy lung. And so we performed simulations to observe the ultrasound propagation through the damaged tissues and we tested different ultrasound frequencies to analyze the behavior of the ultrasound intensity as a function of distance. The results show that at lower frequencies the signal penetrates towards uh, the alveoli when compared to higher frequencies that suffer very high attenuation with the distance. Also, according to the results, the, the tissue layers before the lungs presented lower reflection and the ultrasound signal did, did propagate through all the layers up to the lung. Uh, however, uh, when the signal reached the lungs, uh, it suffered higher absorption and reflection for all the tested frequencies. So to simulate the microbubble's radius oscillations, we used the MATLAB bubble sim package developed by Hoff. Uh, first, we simulated uh, a single microbubble to observe if they would break depending on the applied frequency and acoustic pressure. And for the microbubble itself, we considered a polymeric shell of PLGA with five nanometers of thickness. The outer radius, uh, outer radius was 1.5 micrometers uh, and the gas inside the microbubble uh, had the same properties of the air. We also considered the medium where the microbubble was inserted uh, with the same characteristics of the COVID-19 lung tissue. So the results are in agreement with the ultrasound propagation behavior. Uh, we observed that at 0.1 megahertz, the acoustic pressure reaching the microbubbles was uh, 2.565 megapascal, uh, which caused high oscillations of the microbubbles and the amplitude was large enough to, to cause the, ra uh, the rupture of the microbubbles. 
but at 0.3 megahertz and 1 megahertz, uh, the, the acoustic pressure reaching the micro bubbles decreased, uh, which caused small oscillations that were not enough to break the micro bubbles. And for the other tested frequencies, the same behavior was observed. We performed the same simulation process, now considering the ultrasound intensity of the source following the specified limits by the uh, FDA, and placed five micro bubbles into the lungs at 1.8 centimeters of distance from each other in the same direction. The results show that for the ultrasound intensity of 94 uh, milliwatts per uh, squared centimeter, uh, when the frequency applied was 0.1 megahertz, 60% of the micro bubbles ruptured and 40% oscillated. For the remaining tested frequencies, the micro bubble oscillated uh, or didn't suffer any excitation. And for the ultrasound intensities of 430 and 720 milliwatts per square centimeter, the results were the same. When the applied frequency was uh, 0.1 megahertz, 80% of the micro bubbles ruptured and 20% oscillated. Uh, at 0.3 megahertz, 20% of the micro bubbles ruptured and 80% uh, oscillated. And for all the other frequencies tested, the micro bubbles oscillated or didn't suffer any excitation. So in this paper, we propose uh, an ultrasound-based control of exosomes released from microbubbles for treating lung damage from COVID-19 infection. Uh, simulations were performed uh, to validate the required intensity and frequency of the ultrasound signals that will penetrate different layers of the tissue to reach the alveoli containing the microbubbles. Uh, and the results from the simulations show that very low frequency signals are more efficient in oscillating and vibrating the microbubbles in order to break them to release the exosomes. Our proposed, uh, our proposed approach can lead to future reactive and proactive treatments uh, where the microbubbles can be ruptured to release the exosomes uh, on demand. And future experimental procedures could improve and validate the results of our proposed approach, strengthening our model. Uh, a clinical trial could also be performed to obtain the, su the success rate of in vivo patients. So thank you for your time. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me or any uh, author of this paper.